today's video, I'm going to be going over three film emulation programs that we can use directly in DaVinci Resolve. So the first one we're going to be taking a look at is the film look creator that is new into DaVinci Resolve 19 beta. The second one we're going to be taking a look at is Dehancer Pro. And the third one is going to be color.io. I have a few clips that are on my MacBook right now. We're going to get into taking a look at most of these clips. I have a variety of outdoor stuff, cinematic boxing stuff. Some clips are a little bit more moody than others. So we're going to see what kind of look, more of a creative look we can get by using three of these film emulation programs and which one kind of works best and just more control over the other. So yeah, let's get into it. The film look creator. So we're going to go up to the node, transfer that over. And uh, so we have a few of these presets here. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the default 35 mil. And then down here, I'll put white point. These are almost like white balance presets. Uh, and then we have all of our adjustments here, color settings, exposure, contrast, highlights, uh, the fade. This is gonna be like mushing the blacks. Um, I'm gonna keep my blacks as dark as possible. Also our white balance adjuster tool here. I'm gonna keep it as is. Uh, richness, this is almost like saturation in the colors. That's re as we can see that we got the reds here changing. I don't want it too richness. And then the split tone, uh, I'll get to in a second. And then we have all these other adjustments here, which I'm not going to get into. I'm just going to dis disable all of this stuff. I'm just going to, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to be going over more of like the color in these film emulation plugins and all the stuff that we can get out of um, just a color wise in these plugins. So I'm gonna go to enable split tone. Now the amount, this is basically adding like of the split tone we wanna add to our image. I'm gonna keep that at 50. And then if I like what I'm doing in the split tones, I'm gonna adjust it to add more to the amount of the um, hue and pivot. I don't wanna go too much of the amount because then it just, it's kind of ruining our image. So now up here in the color space overrides, we are able to input what log uh, profile we're shooting in, but I can also just adjust my contrast here just to make the image a little bit more darker and pleasing. The next one we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna grab still. So I have that for my reference for later. Uh, and then I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna reset. And then now we're gonna be using Dehancer Pro. I'm gonna add Dehancer Pro in there. Uh, so now Dehancer Pro, we have the um, option to choose what camera profile we're using, S-Log3, almost like the film look creator. Instead, it's almost like a color space transform. But in this, in this case, we're actually able to input our log and uh, ISO 640. Now I'm just gonna adjust my settings here and then I'm gonna come back to the film uh, preset later. So basically what this already did is just added like almost like a Rec 709. Now we, we could have done this in the film look creator, but you can also just adjust the contrast and the blacks with the contrast slider and the fade. Uh, in this case, the answer pro is giving us a little bit more of an option here. Uh, so I'm going to go with the film after developer. Uh, I'm not going to really touch M majority of the look that we're going to be getting is all in the print um, drop down menu in Dehancer. Let's turn our green off just so. We can see what we're actually doing now. The color head. This is almost like the same thing as a film creator split tone, but there's a little bit more of this. We have more options here. We have shadow tone, mid tone and highlight tone. So as we bring this over, we can see it's warming up our image in the highlights. So I like what we have there. Just did this pretty quick. Uh, and then I'm going to go up here. And now this is where we choose our film look. Okay. We're going to run with the Kodak Supra 100. So, so many limitations we can use on each plugin. So the next one we're going to do is color.io, which is a little bit more work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to grab still. I'm going to go to export. 
um, and I'm just going to label this as test. Um, so I'm going to delete that right away just so I don't get confused. Go back into uh, color.io. So now if you guys are not familiar with color.io, I have a video on uh, my channel. If you guys are interested, I'll put it a link up here. If you guys want to watch and get familiar with that. Um, so I'm going to go to this plus sign and then I'm going to bring in my still that I just made in Resolve. So now this was shot on the Komodo, which has a log profile of 3G10. So what I'm going to do is going to come down here, look for the log, log 3G10, click that. And then right away, it's going to add, um, if I go to no preset, this is going to be like a Rec 709. Um, so now all, all over here on the side here, we have a whole bunch of film emulation um, presets that we can click and use straight out of this program. Um, I'm just going to try to find one that I like. I like that one. Quite a, the Vision 350D is my favorite one. So I'm going to just take the halation. I'm going to take the halation and grain off just so we can have a more of a cleaner image. Um, so we're going to go with that. We're going to go and edit. Now this is where all the editing is going to happen. It's a little bit more visualization than Dehancer and Film Look Creator. We have, we're able to see colors instead of it being a slider. Um, so if we move this around, we can see, you know, it's clearly affecting our image. Um, blues, greens, we were able to adjust the saturations in each color. I mean, we're able to do this in other programs, but it's just easier to see what actual color we're, we're, we're adjusting. So now I'm, I'm happy with this. I might just do some more quick adjustments, just a little bit more saturation. So now when we're done, we're going to go to export. We're going to click 3D LUT here. So this is going to export a 3D LUT for our image. And then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to rename this. You got to make sure the dot cube file is still there or dot cube text is still there. So I'm going to go put test for video. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come here into resolve, go into my Komodo folder that I've made. I'm going to go to reveal and finder. So now because I copied that LUT that I just made, I'm going to paste it right in there. So I'm going to come back here, go to refresh. Now it's going to refresh and, and that LUT should still should be that LUT should be here. Um, LUT for test for video. That's what color.io just created for us, or I kind of created using their presets. I'm going to hit default 35 mil just to get a quick start on this film look um, on the first film look for this uh, shot. I'm going to bring the exposure up a bit and then bring our contrast over. Now the fade tool basically kind of mushes the black in the image. Uh, I want to keep our image more contrasty, make the blacks pop a little bit more. So I'm going to keep that all the way at zero. Now white balance tool, we have a little slider here. So I'm gonna just gonna select, I'm gonna keep it at 64. Tint, I'm gonna keep all of this the same. I also don't wanna ruin the skin tones. So I'm going to go to reset. I'm going to go all the way down to Dehancer Pro. I'm going to add that on and then we're going to go to choose camera, select, and we're going to go to red. So now Dehancer and color.io have more of an input selection for us to choose what kind of log format we are rolling with on top of the camera source that we're using. Um, so in this case, shot red uh, 6K IPP2. You know, this doesn't look very good, but we have some fixing to do. Um, let's just make it bright and change the temperature a little bit. We'll bring it down. Um, I'm going to choose Kodak and then I'm going to bring our whites. I'm going to bring the target white ratio over just so it's adding more of a warm look into the whites of the image. Uh, and then I'm going to bring the contrast over just a slight. Now I'm going to take off the the grain 
for now just so we can see what's happening to our overall image um, exposure let's bring this up a little bit and then tonal contact contrast I'm gonna leave it right there now color head so shadow tone uh, first of all we're gonna have to enable this I'm gonna bring this over so if we go over we can see it's adding a little bit more blue into our shadows over here so I'm gonna bring this over so we can keep a little bit more of the blues and warms in there now this is now the highlight tones are basically only affecting our highlights in the image which is right here and right here as we can see as i slide over the colors are changing i like the warm look in there we're using fuji chrome velvia velvia 100 never used this film preset um but i like what it's doing to the image it's giving us more of like a warm vintage look uh, so i'm gonna go to grab still and i'm just gonna make sure we export this one as well so now i'm gonna add this one to the top of the screen And um, we're gonna compare those two with color.io and then we're just gonna go to export and then I'm just gonna put log. So now what we have to do is go to color.io here on my desktop. Now these are all programs that, or all projects that I've been doing. Here, I'm gonna select red log 3G10. So now we're gonna select a film preset that we wanna choose from. So I like the BSC cold one. Uh, now we're gonna go over here to the square and we're gonna just kind of fix this up a bit. That's nice right there. And then we can also crush the blacks down here or we can bring them up. Let's bring the green all the way down. And boom, so now the thing is with color.io, we have to go to file, export, bring that in. And then what I'm gonna do is just label this as movie going to LUTs. Now this was shot on the Komodo. So I'm gonna go over here, reveal, and I'm gonna paste the movie LUT inside that folder. I mean, it's just a couple more steps, nothing crazy. Um, so now the only thing is we just have to come over here and select I have a clip here that was shot on the Nikon C30. And the reason why I'm gonna use this clip is because we have the outside shot. We have some, we have a nice blue sky. We have greens, we have buildings, we have different colored cars. We look for film look creator. We're gonna bring this over and we're gonna start off with the default 35. Let's get rid of the notes so we can maximize the screen. I'm gonna change my white balance. Something a little warmer, contrast, a little too contrasty. And by a subtractor saturation, we're gonna bring the saturation up. Richness. We're just gonna go with the Cineon film log to our image. Uh, we can get rid of the node and then I'm going to choose my film preset after I kind of dial in my look that I want to go for. Turn that on print Kodak. That's a great looking. So the Kodak, I, I love what it's doing to the blues up here. Like we can see like a nice baby blue sky. If we turn that off, we can see a huge difference even in the greens. Uh, and if we target white, we can bring that over to a warmer a warmer look for dehancer we're going to choose a film preset that we can also use in color.io which is going to be the kodak vision 3 500t okay so this is going to be with the kodak vision 3 500t
So now we're gonna go in to the color.io, bring this in, do the exact same thing we did with the first clip. So I already have my image here. Now, because this is not shot on a log profile, it's a flat, technically, there, it, I guess there is no pr preset to click for all these editing platforms or for film emulations. So what I'm gonna do is click Rec 2020 and that's gonna give us more of like a Rec 709 image. And then off the top, Vision 3 500T, like those colors are just like, they're nasty, they're great. Um, I'm gonna go to grain, turn all the grain off. That's off. I'm gonna turn the halation off. Like this is almost like a look that we would see in like a, a vintage movie that, and it kind of matches. And this is why I shot this because it's got like a vintage looking, the vintage looking hotel. We have that car in the front and then we have the most modern looking cars right next to it. We have like the patio furniture out there that's red. Like I'm not even gonna bother adjusting anything in here because this is great. So Vision 3, so I'm gonna go to export, uh, go to my Nikon Z30 folder, reveal. I'm gonna paste that. I'm gonna go to refresh, Nikon 330, and then boom. Mind you, the hotel, the car, it's playing a huge role. So I'm gonna go to grab still, gallery, and then I'm just gonna compare these side by side. I'm gonna go to export. Each plugin is gonna have their limitations. Film Look Creator, it's free with DaVinci Resolve 19 Beta, which is amazing. Dehancer Pro, there's a price for that as well, and also Color.io. I'll put a link in the description for Dehancer Pro and Color.io, but I feel like Film Look Creator is gonna have huge future updates and the limitations of what we're able to do now versus later. What we're able to do now with the Film Look Creator, it's amazing for what it offers. Color.io has a little bit more of a visualization to see where your image is heading. Dehancer Pro is just more of a sliding option, even though they do have a lot of film presets as well. Color.io is just a few more steps that you have to do to get a good looking image. But in the end, it's totally worth it. I would recommend using any of these three plugins if you're looking to get a film look on your next project. So that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know in the comments below, or if there's another film emulation plugin preset or LUT that you guys are using, drop it down in the comments. Other than that, we'll see you guys on the next video.